Well, good morning. It's good to be in adult Sunday school this morning. It's good to dive into the Word of God today. I feel, I feel the presence of the Lord today. When I got up this morning and I went to that Keurig, you know, we're all creatures of habit. We have our little system when we get up in the morning. We brush our teeth at the same time. We get prepared to come to the house of God. And I went to that Keurig and popped that cup of coffee in and began to study again this morning. I'd studied last night and spent some time in prayer and looking at the Word of God. And I know Brother Kerry is a very good teacher, so I have some big shoes to fill this morning as your substitute. Just don't throw any spitballs or paper at me as a substitute this morning. Um, <clears throat> but he has been talking about a love revolution and the writings of the Apostle John. And to recap a little bit, we know that Peter and Paul are gone. Matthew, Mark, Luke, they're all gone. John's the last apostle. And he started seeing things in the church and he started looking at things that made him quite uncomfortable. How many of you can honestly say, I see some things today <laughs> that makes me uncomfortable in my spirit. I see things today that I don't necessarily like going on in the world or going on in the church. Um, but John taught us to love and that that love was reciprocating. It was God's love toward us. Thank God for the love of God that is toward us today, that is usward toward us. And, but we have to give that love back to Him with our lives. And so that love cannot lead us down a road of tolerance. The love of truth, the love of doctrine cannot lead us down a path of tolerating things. 1 John 2 and 18 says, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. He's the only writer in the New Testament that uses this term Antichrist. We've heard it talked about. We've heard it taught all our lives from a small child. I remember when they would bring the, the chart. Remember the long chart, Sister Kane, and they would stretch it across the front of the church and they would begin to teach about there would be that man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, that vile, lawless person that would come on the scene. And we would not be caught unaware by this person because we would have been taught the doctrine of the Antichrist. But it's not only the doctrine of a person, it's a spirit, an Antichrist spirit, lawlessness, anti-God, against God, pushing against God, pushing against the church, standing defiantly, you ever met a spirit that just was defiant against you? You were praying about a situation and it seemed like everything you were praying for, whether it be a, a, a lost loved one or a child or a situation, you were praying against that and it seemed like something was defiantly pressing against you to keep that prayer from being answered. That's an antichrist spirit because the will of God would be for that person to be saved. The will of God would be for that person to be healed or that person to be delivered. But yet that antichrist spirit is in the world today. Law, law, <clears throat> lawlessness. John is referring here to a spirit as much as he is a person. And Bible scholars identify this as what they call a proleptic, cool word, proleptic prophecy. So this proleptic prophecy was for his day but it also foreshadowed for a future time. And we all know that prophecy can be for a specific time. It can be for next week, and it can come to pass 
that fast on a specific time, but it can also foreshadow future events, greater events. And so over the years, you know, it is said a thousand years as of, as of one day, right, with the Lord. So prophecy can be partially fulfilled and then instantaneously fulfilled. But there is no doubt in my mind this morning, if you just, you ever said somebody say that you stick your finger in the wind, you try the spirits, you, you pray today, if you're prayerful today, if you're studying the word of God, just driving down the road sometimes, I'm like, man, something is going on in the world today. I don't know what it is. I haven't turned on the news. I'm just driving to work. But you can feel it in your spirit. Something is happening in our world. And then you turn on the news and you go, oh, bombs are falling in Russia. Wow. Or something's going on with China or North Korea or there's a change in the Middle East. All these things are lining up for end time events and we have heard about them and it's easy to be lulled to sleep with them it's easy to say well we've heard these things before we've heard it taught before we've seen wars and rumors of wars but yet that antichrist person is going to show it, it is at work while I speak right now it is at work right now so we must stay prayed up and realize political winds change and governments change. It's easy to get up here and start teaching and you go straight into government and politics because that's the nature of our world today. Ruled by these governments and these political um, established kingdoms on the earth that have power and authority in the earth. And those people are lining up whether they want to or not. According to the word of God, things are aligning according to biblical prophecy. That is why we have to discern the times and the seasons in which we live. Matthew 24 and 24 says, For there shall arise false Christs, false prophets. They may show signs and wonders, insomuch if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Have you ever seen someone work miracles? Have you ever seen witch doctors? Palm readers, fortune tellers. They can deceive people with their knowledge in the spirit realm. My mom knew a young lady at their church started going to a fortune teller. My mom said, what are you doing, young lady? Thank God for elders in your life that will get you back on a right path. This young lady's going to a fortune teller and the things the lady is telling her are coming to pass, Brother Garcia, coming to pass. And she got faith in what was going on there, and she was being deceived, spiritually deceived, by what this lady was telling her. Telling her things that was going to happen to her, whether it was good or bad. It is so easy to get caught up into false prophets, false words, false teaching. And we know the word anti means against. And that lying, sinister spirit is against the church. It's against the church. And it's one thing to look around out in the world and say, well, there's politics in the world. It's in our educational systems. Look at what's taught today in schools. Look at the warfare that's going on in our schools. The things that they want to teach in our school system. We need to be actively involved in what our kids read in our school books. We need to be actively involved in looking at what they are given to read. I remember when Blake was in elementary school in the 90s. I remember watching some of the things and I go, I don't think I like this book. We would look at what they were sending home. The reading list had certain books you had to read. We would pick out what we liked. And then we would push away what we did not like. Because that anti-God, anti-spirit is in our educational system. Amen. It's the truth. 
And that false spirit, if we're not careful, can get in the church. People have come up to you. Have they ever planted a little seed of doubt? Do you really think we have to do this? Do, do we really have to stay with Jesus' name baptism? Nobody else does that. You're the only guys doing that. Y'all are sticking to that old doctrine. You got to get with the times, people. You can't. You got to change with the culture. Isn't that the spirit of the day? I'm sorry. My mind's made up today. I'm not bending. I'm not breaking. I'm not going back on the word of God. I can't do that. We've come too far as a church. We've come too far as a people to listen to what is being pushed in our culture and pushed in our education system and pushed by our government. I'm glad Roe v. Wade got turned upside down a little bit. Don't mean to preach. I'm supposed to teach, but I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. First John 2 and 19 says, this is what happens when people listen to false doctrine. They go out from us. And he said, they would have continued if they really loved doctrine. If they really loved truth, these people would have continued with us. But they were not of us and it was manifested and they left us. How many people, how many loved ones, how many friends have you sat and fellowshiped with and shared bread and drank coffee with and ate a meal with and then you look around five, ten years later and you go, where are they? Why are they doing that? Why have they gone away from what they know is true? And you can't say it's not hard. Sometimes you look around and you feel isolated. You feel like you're the only one standing for truth. You feel like you're the only one. Am I the only one feeling like that sometimes? When everything is disintegrating around you and there's this falling away that the Bible talks about and it's all around you and you look around and you go, wow, I'm the only one. Brother Cain, you're the only one still standing for that. You're the only one that still believes that way. But he said they would go out from us and you would see it and it would be made manifest right in front of your very eyes. And it hurts. You feel for them. We, people that leave the church and walk away from the church, those prodigals and those people that get away from truth, John taught us to love them with an unending love and to restore them and to pray for their restoration and to pray for them to be turned back to the love of the truth. If there ever was a day and ever was an hour, we need to love the truth like we have never loved it before and stand for the word of God it is today. Praise God. It is a lying spirit of Antichrist. Just so long as you are sincere. Right? We're all going to the same place. It doesn't matter what you believe. Right? Muslim, bu Muslims, Buddhist, Hindu, name your world religions. We're all going to that one God, right? Or multiple gods or that one good heavenly place. So we're all just believing kind of like the same thing. Let's all be enlightened and get educated on these different religions and let's study those and let's take the good from that religion and take the, the good from this piece and then the good from that and then pretty soon my spirit is, is confused and then, but this, this sounds good. It makes my flesh feel good. Or I don't have to live a certain way. Or I don't have to dress a certain way. I don't have to talk a certain way. I can live in continual sin and be saved. I can live in habitual sin and it's okay. I can, that's the doctrines of the world today. Right? There are no moral absolutes. There are no lines drawn in the sand. God help us to recognize that faith in a lie... <laughs> You can be sincere and believe a lie and be sincerely lost and believe false doctrine. Aren't you glad you know the truth today? John knew that there would be people falling away. 
And it was people that he loved. He had watched it even in the early church. That spirit had gotten loose even for those that saw the signs, wonders, and miracles, saw Jesus walk the earth. People that witnessed Lazarus come out of the tomb had started walking away from the truth. People said, well, if I could have just seen the crucifixion or if I could have watched that miracle or if I could have been there when he walked on water, then I would have, I would have been able to stand for truth. We have so much more knowledge today and to whom much is given, much is required. We have the Holy Ghost baptism today that guides us and leads us and teaches us. And it gives us that little check. I call it the check valve in the spirit. It kind of checks me. You know, valves stop a flow. If you understand fluid mechanics, a valve can check the flow of fluid in a hydraulic cylinder. And they have check valves in industry. And these, these prosthetic feet that I fit all the time have these little valves in them and these knees. And they... They have check valves. Well, we have the Holy Ghost check valve that stops. Stops us when it needs to stop, stop us. Moves us when we need to move. It gives us an ear to hear what the Spirit's saying to the church. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Look at what it says. Let no man deceive you by any means. By any means. By words. False words. By the miraculous. Except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. No matter how much you love people, don't let them convince you to compromise your core beliefs. I love Brother James Marshall like my own brother. We've known each other for many years. I'll use him as a pers personal example. I'd, I'd fight for his family just like he would for mine. No blood re relations whatsoever. But if he changed his core beliefs that we share common ground, I would love him, but I would not let him influence what I believe. And he would tell you the same thing. I'm pretty sure he'd walk up to me and go, Richard Bowler. Have you lost your mind? Has your mom or daddy ever said, Son, have you lost your mind? When you're getting on to your kids, your little kid, girl, have you lost your mind? Right? The pastor should be able to say, Have you lost your mind today? What are you thinking? I've had that happen. Thank God for elders and pastors and teachers. And people in the church, stay close to the church. Fellowship people of like precious faith. Because there's times you will get down. There are times when you will feel like, I don't know if I can make it today. But then you sit down with that one person who's been praying. That one person who's on a mountain. And they look at you and they say, you're going to make it. You're going to get through this. This trial of your faith, this trial that you're going through, those people are the people you need to fellowship with. Not those that will deceive by any means. Not those that will bring extra temptation into your life. If you fellowship those that are not living according to Scripture, we, we should do that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong going to their birthday parties. Nothing wrong with going to their house and having a meal with them. Nothing wrong with going to a conference with them, sitting down and having a meal, talking, sharing current events, talking sports. Hey, I'll talk whatever I know. I don't know as much as I used to because I don't follow it as much as I used to. It's just not that important anymore. The older you get, things that you used to think were so important aren't as important as they used to be. But I try to be relevant. I try to be current. I try to know who's got maybe the best batting average. I don't know right now. Maybe you know who has the best batting average in pro baseball right now. I don't know. I'm sure it's somebody hitting a lot of home runs and getting a lot of base hits. But it's okay to do that. But if you fellowship and you stay with somebody who continually pulls at you with those things that are of deception, 
You can be picked off and be one of those that falls away. God help us. God help us. You've got to recognize hell's attacks, the devil's cunning nature, and the world's animosity against the church. It's not a friendly atmosphere anymore. Paul talked about it, a warfare. He told Timothy, you're going to have to fight a good war. You're at war from the day you got the Holy Ghost, buddy. You got that big red target on your back. Because you're a blood-bought child of the king, and you got this big red bullseye. You were a Holy Ghost-filled young person, adult. Doesn't matter if you started last week or 75 years ago. You have a target on your back. And from the day you became baptized in his name and filled with his spirit, that Antichrist spirit started fighting you. It started fighting your family. It started fighting the church. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against this word and the church. So how do we fight? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? How do we fight? How do we stand up against an Antichrist spirit? We stay full of the Holy Ghost. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, you have an unction from the Holy One. You have the holy anointed oil of God in your DNA. It's, it's absorbed into your body. It's part of who you are. It's part of your chemical makeup. If you've got that in your spirit and it's alive and on fire, you will not fail. You cannot fail. I know the truth and I'm not going to turn from it. 1 John 2 20 and 21. But you have an unction. That's what I was just talking about. You have an unction from the Holy One. You know all things. I have not written, have I not written it unto you because you know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie, right? No lie is of the truth. There were false Christians in John's day that claimed to have an unction, and some people can. Some of it's just charisma. It's where we get the word charismatic. They got the right smiles, the right look. They got the right mannerisms. They say the right buzzwords. There's buzzwords they can learn. I don't want to make fun of preaching because I am one, but you can write, have the right aha uh -huh in your voice and get it going and start saying the right things and pushing the right buzzword and jump around. If it's not genuine, you should know it because you have an unction from the Holy One. And there are those that have those mannerisms that are very anointed. I saw a blind man led to a pulpit couldn't read scripture because he was blind. He knew scripture. He quoted scripture. He had listened to scripture. Very strange mannerisms. But he had an unction from the Holy One. And I watched him preach one day. And I was in the service with that blind man who stood there and preached the word of God. And then he began to walk around in the congregation and everybody's like, is he going to bump into everybody? This blind man was going up and down the aisles preaching. He got a guy to put, get under his arm with him and walk around in the sanctuary. Now, a blind preacher. And I could hear people's, well, he, he's blind. He don't have any faith. Right? You could, I, I'm, I'm saying I hear the voices. Brother Bo's giftings. I'm hearing the voices. He, he's telling people God's going to heal them. Well, you're blind, preacher. Yeah. And I saw a man with a withered arm and a withered hand drawn up like this from a stroke. And that blind man walked straight to him. Couldn't see. And laid his hand on his head. And I saw that withered arm straighten out. And that place erupted in a Holy Ghost downpour. Why? Because he had an unction, Brother Cain, a blind preacher from the Holy One of Israel. And he touched a man, and I saw that withered arm instantaneously healed. We have knowledge, and we have unction. 
But the apostolic church knows the real Holy Ghost. Do you feel the real Holy Ghost today? Do you know the real and the genuine today? Do you know that eventually those that go out from us, they deny the revelation of the oneness of God? Those that generally leave the truth, elder, they generally want to walk away from Jesus' name baptism. And it's a progressive falling away. It doesn't start overnight. A person that ends up hooked on drugs, if, you, if you're here today and been delivered from that, a person that takes drugs, there are even certain prescriptions you have to wean off of those things. But they slowly, your body gets to where you want that or you need that drug. Well, backsliding and false doctrine starts with one compromise. And then when you get comfortable with that one compromise, and then you say, well, then I'm going to do this. And then you compromise in another area of your life, and then you compromise this, and then all of a sudden, well, going to church is not that important. I'll go once a year. As long as I make it Easter Sunday, I'm good. Forsake not the assembling of yourself. Wasn't that written somewhere? Okay, we'll, we'll leave that alone. Okay, but I'll go at Christmas. You know, I, I made it Christmas and I made it, I, made, I made it that one Sunday on New Year's and then I'll be back at Easter and then I'll be back at Christmas. And then it's okay. It's okay that I'm on vacation 42 weeks out of the year and I'm at church four weeks out of the year. Or it's okay to take a job that takes me all over the world and I'm never fellowshipping the people of God. Or I'm never at church because, well, I'm just too busy. See how it progresses? I, I, I just, I don't really have to be there. Oh, I, I can study on my own. I don't need anybody to teach me. Dear God, teach me. Teach me. I want leaders in my life. I want, I want people feeding me the Word of God and feeding my spirit, the truth. People that have an unction, I want to be around them. I want to be around people that have relationship with God. Jesus, help us. Who is a liar? 1 John 2, 22 and 23. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son, denies the Son. The same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Remember John started backing up oneness doctrine. He said, he that's seen me has seen the Father. The Father's in me and I'm in him. That they may be one even as we are one. I and my father are one. And before Abraham was, he said, I am the almighty God. That's when they screamed blasphemy. blasphemy. They couldn't even recognize that God had been manifest in the flesh. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Do you know that the lying spirits of the Antichrist, spirit that's against the church today, how are we going to survive that? Don't depart from what you know, the doctrine that you know. If it worked 50 years ago, it still works today. When Brother Dylan's mom was up here singing those old songs last Sunday and the Holy Ghost fell, I said, you know what? We need some of that sometimes. We need an elder to get up and just sing an old time. I'm going to take a trip on a good old gospel ship. I'm going far behind these guys, friend. And it got to move in here. And then the Holy Ghost fell. People that you would have never thought got the Holy Ghost last Sunday and then got baptized because God works that way. He works with a divine unction when we don't depart from what we know to do. Praise God. 1 John 2 and 24 and 25. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning, and that you heard from the beginning, and it shall remain in you. 
You shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us even until eternal life. There are so many things that are coming to the church that are still yet to happen. And, the, and when you think about heaven, there's a lot of teaching on heaven and different things that people have different beliefs. There are specific things you can find in the Word of God, and then there are other people that have beliefs about heaven. Living eternally is a pretty good thing for me. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of looking forward to that. I love going to weddings. I love going to the hospital when a baby's born. I don't like looking at caskets. How many of you love the good look of a nice casket? Boy, it got quiet. None of us like the idea of that. And we live our, we live our lives sometimes like we, we really don't even believe it's going to happen to us. These knots in my fingers are the beginning of arthritis. I got knots here in my fingers and they're drawn up. Turning wrenches all my life and doing work using little, little tools and hand tools. It lets this body know, Brother James, it's going back to dust. This body may fail, but this soul is going to live somewhere in eternity. And there are doctrines that will take that soul to hell, or there are doctrines that will take that soul to heaven to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, I've always said, i got a lot of questions I want to ask him. But you know, those are just your flesh wanting a few answered questions. How many of you got some questions you want answered? I believe when we get in his presence, we're not going to worry about all that. Things that we thought were so important, when we get in heaven and we're sitting down with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and we're in his presence, I think that stuff's just going to all leave our spirit. Aren't you glad you're going to live eternally one day? Let this truth abide in you. Let it stay. Let it remain. Let it dwell. Let it endure. It's an endurance test. Right? If you buy, I don't want to use autos, but I don't know. You can buy a good tractor or you can buy a cheap tractor. You can buy a good lawnmower, you can buy a cheap lawnmower. Something that costs you more that's more well-built, well-made lasts longer, right? But it costs you a lot more. This truth may cost you a little bit more. This word may go, mm, I, don't, uh, I don't like it, but my flesh, and it may make me not feel so comfortable, it, it's got a cost to it. But that cost has great reward. Whew. Great reward. 1 John 2, 26, 27. But these things I've written unto you concerning them that will seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. You have no need that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you, teacheth you all things, and it's truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. He's not saying you don't need teachers. He's saying those teachers that are giving you these false tidbits of false doctrine. You don't need these people to speak into your life false things, negative things, things that aren't true. He said, you have the Holy Ghost abiding in you. You have the Holy Ghost to teach you. So these people may deceive and cause others to mislead and wander and stray from the truth. And the devil's out in full force with these people dropping these little tidbits and these words of deceit and false doctrines and things that will weigh on your spirit. But he said, you got an unction. You got the Holy Ghost. These things will not lead you away if you stay full of the Spirit of God. When they poured the anointing oil on people and it ran down, sometimes they put it on the ear, they put it on the thumb, they put it on the big toe, 
Why? I want to hear. I want to work. And I want to walk in the ways of God. I want to hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saying to the church. And we talking about, we're talking about fellowship and light and darkness. And you're, you're fellowshipping and somebody says something and you go, Ooh, I, I didn't like that. Or they just say something that kind of, it was sandpaper. It kind of scratched you. It rubbed you the wrong way. You just have to kind of mark those things and you go on and you love and you pray for people. But you, you're like, I, I don't know if I want to be a part of that. Because those things. People and those things will attack the truth and those core values and beliefs that we have. And they can easily start dropping little lies. And the next thing you know, you're believing a lie. And you're pulled down to their level when we should be pulling them up to our level in the knowledge and the love of Jesus Christ. And now little children, 1 John 2, 28, 29, abide in him. When he shall appear, we may have confidence. Who I have confidence today, don't you? And not be ashamed before him. I don't want to be ashamed before him. Some men's sins go before them into judgment. Other men's sins follow. I don't want those sins following me. I want to be there with those sins before him. And I can say, I'm not ashamed, God. I'm washed in your blood. I'm full of your spirit. I'm here before your throne and I bow before you at this great white throne. And I'm thankful I lived a faithful life. Abide in him. Don't compromise. God, I don't like that word. Don't compromise your core beliefs. Don't compromise who you are. Stand strong in the Holy Ghost and be confident when you stand before him. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And the world will say it's rules, it's legalism. You guys got a bunch of rules. But everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. And if you are born of him, you're going to want to be like him. You're going to want to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're going to want to have those things in you. And the thing that recently got me this past year, God said, you study those gospels. You look at my life. That's who you're supposed to be. That is who you're supposed to be, Richard Bowyer. And I realized I come up so short of who he is. But we are to strive for perfection. We are to walk in accordance to his word. And we are to, that's why you're here. You are here today because you want more of God. You are here today because you want more of his spirit. You want more knowledge of him. You want more doctrine. We're going to have to have all those things to make it out of this world. So it's not legalistic to live for God. It's a love relationship for my master. I love him. He loves me. And I am so thankful today that the love of God is alive and well in our souls today. 1 John 3 and 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world, don't, they don't know us. Because they didn't know him. They look at you strange sometimes when you walk through the mall. They look at you differently. They really don't know who we are. But if we show them the love of God, they'll want to know who we are. We are his sons and daughters. What an amazing, miraculous love he has bestowed upon his children. We who were the children of sin are now called the children of God. I'm no longer a child of sin. I'm no longer under that bondage. I'm free today. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Many people don't understand the church either. I was in college and I took a class on marriage and family, Pastor. Me and my wife were the only married people at 19 years old in a classroom of 300 and something people. They made a real big joke about it one morning. Me and my wife were sitting there and the teacher stood up and it was a sociology class. How many people were married in here? And I actually made a C in the class. I failed marriage and family. I mean, it was a hard class. I think it was because some of the stuff they were teaching I disagreed with. 
went against the teaching of the church, went against certain things. And my wife's laughing about that right now. She made a better grade than me. Maybe she paid more attention in class than I did. But the, the class, the, the guy said, and this other person too, this other teacher I had one morning lecturing said, I love going to the mall. I love to watch the Pentecostals come out. They got Grandma Pentecostal and Mom and Dad Pentecostal and then the little kid Pentecostals and they all look alike. So that had had an impact because he was very curious of how these families stayed together. So those core values, those beliefs that some call legalistic, we call the love of God, keeping our family saved and on our way to heaven. Nothing to be ashamed of. Not ashamed of the gospel of Christ today. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. 1 John 3 and 7. Doeth means a person continually lives a righteous life. Right? But 1 John 3 and 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning for the purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Committing, committeth, habitual, progresses, stays in, abides in. We're talking about abiding in grace and truth and doctrine. We're talking about staying in the church full of the Holy Ghost. But those that stay in habitual sin, they can continually commit sin. How can they be saved? But that's that damnable doctrine of once saved, always saved. These, we're out of that legalistic stuff, man. We can live any way we want to live. You guys got it all wrong. We got it figured out. I was in New Orleans this week for a conference. About 40 of us came time for dinner. I was the only one there not drinking. Man, you want to drink? No, I don't, I don't drink. What? You're in the Big Easy, man. You're in New Orleans. I'll have some of these barbecue shrimp. They're just right. But that, that little voice said, go ahead and have a drink with them. You mean you heard that voice? Wait, that's the culture today. That's the social norm. Social drinking. Go ahead. What's wrong, Bo? Have a little wine. You, you'd fit in with them. You would fit in. Then, then, then you, you wouldn't even have to explain why you don't drink, Pastor. You wouldn't have to explain that you love God and the Holy Ghost and, and doctrine and truth and and if you ever came from that lifestyle, some people have never had that lifestyle, but if you ever came from that lifestyle, then that temptation, that old nature, that old carnal nature, that old nature, oh, ha have a drink with them. I'm talking to somebody today. Things that will keep you saved, those little tests, that little small voice, that check valve of the Holy Ghost, that unction from the Holy One that says, don't do that, stay away from that, that's that old nature trying to come back. But I'm born of God. I have an unction from the Holy One. I got that oil on my ear. I got that oil on my thumb. I got that oil on my foot. I'm going to work for Him. I'm going to live for Him. I'm going to hear from Him. I'm going to live eternally with Him. So they had the meal and then they were like, well, let's go to the Ritz-Carlton. Oh, man, the Ritz-Carlton. I'll go to the Ritz-Carlton with you. They got a jazz band over here, and I'm, okay, I'll listen to a little, dur, 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 a little jazz music. I'm sitting there. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just sitting there listening to some jazz music. And they brought out these donuts, Pastor. They weren't beignets. They weren't Cafe Du Monde kind of stuff. But they were these donuts, and they were on this big tray, this big tray of donuts, and they were lined up. And they had, Brother Garcia smiling now. They got, they got, this uh, homemade vanilla cream sauce. And then they had this caramel and then this bittersweet chocolate. And the guy goes, this is my happy place. And we're sitting on a couch in the Ritz-Carlton, and I'm going, yeah, this is a good place. And I'm comfortable. Of course, they're drinking still. And um, social drinking, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're hitting their hard liquor. I'm going to have some of these donuts. So I'm looking at those donuts, and I go, 
That really looks good. That really looks good. That, the vanilla, the vanilla. And I get one. And I hate to say it, I double dipped in front of God and everybody. But I took a bite and I had to dip again so nobody else would get in the vanilla anymore because I like the vanilla. Okay? So I double dip the vanilla and I eat it and I go, that's good enough to eat another one. In fact, I could eat all six of these. But then that voice in my head said, if you eat all six of those, you're going to weigh three pounds more in the morning. So then when I was studying for this lesson, I thought about those donuts. Nothing wrong with those donuts. Nothing wrong with that vanilla. And the bittersweet chocolate was good and the caramel. You see, I tested them all. And isn't that the way we are with Christians? This flesh will test us. And we may test things and realize that wasn't for me. And really, that's not a sin. And this doesn't fit with my apostolic lifestyle, but it's, it's not a sin, but I'll just dip it in that vanilla cream sauce and I'll, I'll take a bite. Oh, God. And doing it that one time won't put the two or three pounds on me, that one or two. But if I eat six of those and then a couple of days later, I have another six of those. And then I add, well, that's not important over here. And then I dip in there. You see what I'm saying? The battle of the mind and the spirit and this flesh, that vanilla cream sauce was real good. We're talking about moderation. We're talking about doctrine. We're talking about those things that can pull us and weigh us down. 1 John 3 and 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For the seed of God remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. We live beneath our privilege. We, we live beneath who we should be. He's holy, so I should strive to be holy. He's pure, I should strive to be pure. I want to be more like Him every day. If you pray those things, He will take those things out of you that will cause you to be more like Him. If you ask God to show you a more excellent way, He will show you a more excellent way. I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk like I used to walk. He made the difference in my life. Aren't you glad you are different today? Aren't you glad you have a different lifestyle today? Aren't you glad you're not tempted by the things of this world today? Aren't you glad that John wrote about the love of God and an antichrist spirit that will attack you, but you'll stand in the face of all hell and say, I will not compromise. I will stand for truth today. 1 John 3 and 10. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, and neither he that loveth not his brother. Wow. There can be a whole lesson on this. Brother Tenney used to say, put as many people on your right and as many people on your left, and you stay right here focused on Calvary and the cross. And you keep that cross right in the middle of your life. And you keep that altar alive in your life. And you keep that place of dedication and consecration alive in your life. And you stay aligned with Him. And you love your brothers on the right. And you love your brothers on the left. He said to work out your own salvation with what? Fear? Trembling. Those core values, those core beliefs that you're developing, that you have developed, that you've walked with. Thank God for elders. When I see somebody that has lived for God 50, 60, 70 years, 
they, that have not wavered. Sister McCrory taught Blake. Blake's 31 years old. He taught, she taught my son when he was a little boy, Sunday school. He still talks about that Sunday school class. Why? Because she had core values and beliefs that she has not wavered from. And she has walked according to righteousness as a son and daughter of God. It is obvious and manifested by your actions whose child you are. Actions speak louder than words. I want what I do and how I act to preach more and teach more than the words that I have. Brother Jordan, it's what I do. It's who I am. Praise is who I am. I will praise him. I will love him. I will follow him. I will honor him with my life, my actions, my deeds, not just my words. We cannot give this world lip service. We have to show this world love. My words mean nothing if, if, the, if the unction is not there and the Spirit of God is not there and the love of God is not there and my lifestyle is not there and does not back up what we claim to believe. Well, just compromise Jesus' name baptism. We'll get more people. The Holy Ghost doesn't have to be essential. It can be optional. I'm sorry, the gospel is not a truck or a car that comes with different options. Remember what I said? You can buy a good tractor, a nice tractor, or you can buy a cheap one. Some things cost you more to get the best. John said, regardless of what they say, and regardless of what they pretend to be, they are not of God. We have to be on guard more than ever. Jesus said to watch and pray. Open your eyes. Ask God to give you stronger discernment in the end time. Because the enemy of our souls and that antichrist spirit is moving, it's working. It's manipulating. It's seductive. It's subtle. It used to be real subtle, but now they're openly saying these things. So if they're in your face with their doctrines, if they're in our face with what they believe to be true, where's our boldness? Give us a holy boldness today to say, these are not my words. I know a God that wrote these words. I'm going to stay with the doctrine of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the fivefold ministry. I'm going to stay with doctrine and truth, and I'm going to fellowship people that love the truth and love the light and love the gospel and love people. And aren't you glad you are a part of a Holy Ghost-filled church that is on its way to heaven, that is impacting its community, that is impacting its world, that's impacting its state and nation. Your prayers impact the world. The love of God that we are about to shed abroad on all our North American missionaries will impact the world. That is a prophetic word that started years ago that is being completed in our church. And it's being completed through you and I. There are those that were with us that we have buried, Pastor. That loved it, gave to it, lived it, blazed a trail. Think of the elders in your life and people that have lived this. We are the greatest generation. We are the generation of the end time. We are the generation that just may see the rapture of the church any moment. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed and be like him forever. So I will live with that love revolution in my heart. Let's all stand. Thank you, God, for your beautiful word today. <laughs> Let us take a spirit into our next service. 
that we are going to give it everything we have. That we are not going to stray from truth. And when the truth comes across this pulpit, we will receive it and put it deep in our hearts and put it deep in our minds and our spirits so that we may please Him. Let us hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, we love you today. Thank you for your beautiful word today, God. Thank you, God, that we are aware of the times and seasons we live in. And thank you, God, you've given us an unction to walk according to your word and your principles and precepts that I might not sin against you. Lord bless you today. Lord bless you. Amen.